Howdy and welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for B-Bender Country Guitar since 2017. In fact, we just celebrated our five year anniversary here on the channel and we did so in style with the release of the Bender Bunker's debut album entitled Vintage with the thumbnail cover popping up right about there. Yep. Those are 10 original guitar instrumentals written, performed, recorded right here in the Bender Bunker. And when I say right here, I mean pretty much right where I'm standing. And they, uh, it's not a country album, it's not a B-Bender album per se, although there's plenty of B-Bender all over it. It's more of a tip of the hat to a style I've always enjoyed, which is the guitar instrumentals of the 1960s, with maybe a bit more of an updated sound. So uh, if you like that kind of guitar instrumental music, this might be the album for you. It's available for streaming and download on all the major sites. I've got some direct links to a few of those in the details section below. And uh, early reports show that it makes excellent background music for both in and out of the bedroom. But again, those are just early reports. I'll keep you updated. But again, that's in celebration of our five-year anniversary. But let's not live in the past. Be done with that. We're ready to move into year six here with a new series that we're starting. We'll be doing several installments this year entitled Tips and Tricks for First-Year Benders which is exactly what it sounds like. And our motto for this will be helping first year benders become second year benders and beyond because that first year is so crucial in your bending journey. I mean, I'm heading, getting close to heading into my seventh year here pretty soon, but I certainly remember what it was like to be a first year bender. And so I'm gonna try and go back and remember some of the things that might've helped me during my first year because the first year is so crucial in any new thing you're doing, especially with bender guitar. If, if it can be quick, fun and easy and most of all enjoyable, then you might be uh, wanting to stick with it and go further. And so let me uh, hopefully give you some tips and tricks here this year through this series that will help you do just that. And we're going to start off with the first installment entitled The Three-Point System. And what is The Three-Point System? Well, it's, for, it's first of all, it's exactly like what it sounds like. It's three major key positions right here on the neck with your bender that can allow you to integrate the bender more quickly and easily into your natural lead playing. And, uh, you know, I remember I played a fair amount of lead before I ever got my first Bender guitar and I quickly realized, boy, a lot of the stuff I know about lead playing just doesn't translate well to the B Bender. You kind of have to bring a whole different world in there and the two butt heads initially that first year from what I remember. So I'm hoping the three point system will help a lot of players more quickly and easily integrate their Bender into their natural lead playing so it can start to become seamless. So that's going to be what we're going to try and do with the three points. I'm going to walk you through the three points. That won't take any time at all. It's the top three strings and it's only three positions. And then more importantly, I'm going to show you how to start integrating it and how to think about these three positions. They're good for any key on the neck. They don't rely on open strings, anything like that. So it's a system that works in any key and I think could be really helpful for a lot of first year players. So this is either going to be great and you're going to learn a lot from the series or I'm blowing a lot of hot air. And there's really only one way to find out. That's grab that bender. Let's get going here with tips and tricks for first year benders here on the Bender Bunker. Well, all right, looks like you might be on board for the first installment of the tips and tricks series, the three point system. And we are indeed going to start as you would expect by learning the three points, three positions. So we can start to have fun with them right out of the box here. But before we get going, do me a favor, just real quick. If you could support the channel with a quick and free, easy thumbs up, I would appreciate it. It does help the channel and also lets the YouTube algorithm know that you might just like to see more B Bender content in general. We can all win from that. If you're new to the channel, this is what we do. Hot Bender Action for the past five years. We have over 70 B-Bender related videos and lessons waiting for you on our main channel page in one convenient playlist. So follow the big arrow there and hit that subscription button in the bottom corner so you don't miss anything. And then finally, if you're like, hey, I really am enjoying this. I did get something out of the three-point system and I wish I could buy this guy a beer, but I don't know him. Well, like so many things in life, that's gone virtual as well. And we call it a virtual beer donation, and you can do that safely and securely through the Bender Bunker's very own PayPal account. Direct link for that in the details section below, and just send, a, send over a virtual beer donation amount of your choice. It is always appreciated. All right, thank you for that, and now let's get into position number one here on the three-point system. All right, let's hit the accelerator now and knock these three positions out. We're going to be learning this initially. Again, as I mentioned, it's good for any key, but we're going to learn it in A. That's because the opening riff that I played you, that was utilizing all of the positions. That's completely utilizing the three-point system up and down the neck. And so we're gonna come back and dissect that riff right after we learn the three positions. So let's get to position one in the key of A. And that's gonna be basically just a smidgen. Again, this is only the top three strings. I mentioned that earlier. We're gonna have that more lead mentality of getting the bender involved in our lead playing. And since that's the B string with your bender, really your top three strings are gonna be key for this. So really I'm just doing an A note. Now I'm putting my middle finger on the third string, second fret for an A note, and then the top two strings are open. 
right? And then we just use our bender to complete the top half of that A chord. All right, that's position one. All right, position two, quick way to visualize position two is the A bar chord. But again, we're only using the top three strings, so we're gonna go five, five, six on that. Position two. Position three, we're gonna call this our seventh shape, or as I always like to think of it as the sideways triangle of twang, because it sure is twangy. And think of it like a D seventh chord. Everyone knows an open D seventh chord, right? And see how that kind of makes a sideways triangle? And boy, it is twangy. Well, D seventh, let's just walk that up the scale, that shape. So there's D seven, E, F, G. There we are for A. That's what we're gonna be playing in, right, as we learn this. So there's our A position three, the seven shape. And that is nine, eight, nine on the frets. So position one, position two, and position three. Easy, right? Told you it'd be easy. So I'm gonna play the riff again and you watch those positions. I did this on purpose to illustrate it. And a lot of the home benders are going, hey, I was with you up until that last part. It sure looks like there's more than three positions because after the seventh position, you jumped up here. And that is true. So let's dissect this riff and I'll show you why it's still just the three point system. So we started here on position one. If you want to learn this riff, I'm going to use it as a teaching tool of the positions. Uh, I start here with my finger on the A note, top two strings open. And then of course, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the third string into the second string, take the bender up. Now, if you're new to this channel, keep your eye on this. Bender engage, bender unengaged, right? I'll say that as well, but if I don't say it, keep your eye on that if there's ever a doubt. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and hit those two strings, the third and second string, take the bender up and hold it there. Doing a high E open, coming back to that A note on the third string. So that's all I did. And that's position one, of course, right? Bender's still engaged. I'm hopping up to position two. Top three strings at A bar chord, and I'm going to start with a high E, go to the B string to let the bender down. And then finish that third note there, third string six. Bender's unengaged. Then I'm hopping up to position three, the seventh shape. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the B string to take the bender up. Hold it there, and I'm going to alternate with the high E ninth. And then come back to let the bender down. And then finish on that third string ninth. And that's position three. So we just use the three position as the opening of that rib. And the bender's unengaged. Now what I did from here was this. So what I did is I came off of position three, the seven shape with the bender unengaged. I slid my index finger up to the top two strings on the 12th fret. And when I got there, I hit the B string on the 12th, took the bender up, held the bender, alternated with the high E next to it, came back to it. And then I jumped up with my little finger and covered the top two on the 17th. Bender's still engaged, of course. And then I'm starting with the high E on the 17th B string, and I'm taking the bender unengaged and re-engaging. So the bender's down, back up. And then I come back to right where I was, index finger returns to the top two on the 12th, and then I just walk my way down, high E, B string 12th, bender down. And then I do the middle, my ring finger on the 14th fret of the G string, your third string. And then I go ahead and hit the top two strings and take the bender back up. You can hit those two strings together. You don't have to hit them individually. Okay, so now let's think about this. Position one, two, three was easy. And then I showed you what I just did there on the 12th fret and the 17th fret. But what I'm really doing here is what is this? Well, the 12th fret being held by my index finger, that's just an octave of what we started in position one. Remember position one's the open strings. 12th fret of that would be octave of that. And then that A note, third string, second fret, well, what would be the corresponding octave for that? That would be the third string 14th, like we just showed you. So there you go. So this is, all this is, is an octave up of position one. So we're gonna call this position one octave. So then what did we do? We jumped up here to, with our little finger to the top two strings of the 17th. Well, what is all that is? That's all that is, is the top octave of position two. Position two was the top two on the fifth. 17th would be that. So 
We did position one octave, position two octave. <laughs> So all this is, is octaves of the three positions we just learned. And of course, what the three point system just did effectively is it took us from open strings in position one, and it took us all the way up here to the 17th fret and all points in between. I mean, we hit a lot of points before we got to the 17th fret. And so that's one of just the many beauties of the three point system is it gives you a lot of net coverage. Think about from the open strings to the 17th and everything we hit in between, we covered a lot of territory here, which is going to work in our favor as we explore this even further. All right, just commit to memory the one, two, three here in A. And then get comfortable with the octave parts of them. If you want to jump up here, you could do position three. All right, just find it from here. And that's your octaves. All right, you get those, and we're going to come back and start to have some real fun with this. All right, so if you're still with me, then I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've, you've got down the three easy positions we covered, and you understand the octave concept as well, okay? Of course, if I was to start my run up here on the 12th, well, I'd be starting here, and that would be my lower octave, right? That's still position one, position one lower octave. But you get the concept of the three positions and the corresponding octaves, and the neck coverage that offers us up and down the neck in any key. And I'll get to other keys later. Now, here's the first thing I want to cover. Now we've got to make this more powerful. We've got to make it more useful because, yeah, this was fun. We learned a riff, but how useful can it really be? Well, the first thing is I see a lot of first year players, and I did this myself my first year of bending, is the tendency to play it the way you learned it. I specifically decided to teach the three positions in a very linear, logical manner because I thought it'd make it go faster. So this was position one, two, three, and I did it up the neck because I thought visually that'd be a great way to teach it. And that way we could keep going up and get into the concept of the octaves. But that kind of makes it look like a one-way street. I'm just going up the neck. And so if you play it like you learned it, you could start trying to incorporate this into your playing and think, okay, and then you always find yourself going up the neck because that's the way you learned it. That's, that's a mistake in my opinion, okay? I'm going to tell you it's a two-way street, okay? So we, let's go up, we went as high as 17, right? Let's use the same positions that got us from open to 17 and go back down with those positions. So again, the same positions that got us up here, we just took all the way back down. Well, we just doubled the fun. So now we can go up the neck and we can go down the neck with it. That's great. No, that's still not the point. That makes it look like a two-way street. And yeah, I get it's twice as much fun, but here's the most key part of this I can get across in this lesson. So listen up, this is it. Don't think of it as a one-way or a two-way street. It's an all-way street. And for the three-point system to be valuable for you ultimately, you've got to understand that these parts in any key are interchangeable. You can jump around, you can go one, three, two, two, three, one. It doesn't matter. They all work very well together and that's how it's gonna be ultimately valuable to you as a player, right? Um, you don't have to start. I, if I wanna come into my solo and I think, boy, that seventh sounds so twangy. I wanted to start there. What we learned is position three right here. That's just an example, right? That's just off the cuff. I came in with what we did as position three, that seventh shape. Okay, but here's what I, here's how I would urge you to think about it. Because I chose that, that's now, I would say that's my position one. You assign positions one, two, three. And what I started with is this, so that's gonna be one. And why it's useful to think of that is I'm not thinking, well, where's two and three out of the gate? I just know that there are two other shapes and I'm starting here, so if I want some variations, I know I've got two others, and then it's just a matter of what does my ear want, where's my hand, what's gonna be easiest, what works with this song. So this is now my one. I work down to two. Hopped up to octave one. Down to lower octave. Two, they're all interchangeable, right? So that's the big key to this system is, yes, learn one, two, three, learn the octave cor corresponding, 
you get the fact that it goes up the neck, it comes down the neck, but then ultimately you've got to understand that all the parts are interchangeable and that's going to be the key that the neck coverage that it offers you then gets really valuable because then you can jump in on any of the positions up and down the neck to start your solo. Don't play them in any given sequence. Get, play them the way your ear hears them. And when you stop thinking one, two, three, you just think of them as the variations. That's where the system is going to be very powerful for you. So think about that concept for a second. Work on it. And then what I do is I'm going to come back now and I'm going to show you by just adding one, two maximum notes to each of the three positions we learned. We expand our twang potential through the roof. And of course, that's the whole point of this, right? Expand the twang. That'd be a good shirt. Patent pending. Don't take it. But I'm going to show you one or two notes to add to each position, which is going to really open this up for you. So when we get the extra notes and then we understand the concept that we're not bound to one direction up and down the neck, they're all interchangeable. That's when the fun starts, when you start playing some riffs. That's coming up next. Okay, let's keep building on the three-point system with some very important additions of just one or two what we'll call twang embellishment notes, okay? So the exact same positions we've learned with the corresponding octaves, no big deal there. The fact we can jump around at will, the parts are interchangeable, we just covered that. So I'm going to add the one or two extra notes in each position so you can hear how that opens things up and really increases the potential of what you can do with this. Now this riff is going to sound very similar, it's just going to have the additional notes and I'm going to be making this up, so bear with me if there's a few flubs. But here's what we could do. <laughs> Okay, jumping around the neck, throwing in the extra notes, but honestly, at the end of the day, all that was was the same positions in A that we've learned, interchanging them, adding the extra notes, and not limiting myself to any one direction. And I think that's about as good an example as I'm going to be able to do at this point. Let's take a moment, and I'm going to show you the one or two extra embellishment notes you can do to keep expanding your vocabulary within the three-point system. Now, it's key to understand, of course, there's not just one or two notes each position. I'm just trying to pick one or two of my favorites to get you started. There's a lot more, and maybe we can circle back in future lessons, okay? So let's go back and learn that right off the same way we started this lesson. Let's go to position one down here, the very original one. <laughs> And I'm going to show you the two embellishment notes I use there. So that is going to be the high E on the third and second and then open. Well, open was already there. So what I did was just use high E, third, second. So I blasted it, kept the bender up, and just did three, two, open on the high E. Bender went up, bender came down. What I did then was a real quick... Well, honestly, I did go up to what we learned as position two. Again, my position two, I used the third and the first of that, third string and first string of that, six and five, with no bender. I just slid up there and did the third, and then a dead note for a triplet. And then I went back and did the high E and the, Bent it. I had it pre-bent. So when I did this, I'm also pre-bending, and you can't hear the B string because I'm only using the third and the first string. Pre-bent, dead note, and then I did high E, B open, bender down. A note, bender back up. Okay, so position one, your embellishment notes are high E, three, and two. What you can do here, a good embellishment note for position two. Let's do high E, seventh on that. I'm use my little finger. Otherwise, it's the exact same position two we've learned. I'm, I'm making it, I'm not changing, I'm just adding my little finger on the high E seventh. All right, so we've got two embellishment notes here, one here, and then position three, our seventh, I've got two notes that I use on that run to embellish with. Just did one of them and it was very subtle. What I did is I started with the position we know, and then when I took the bender up, I was ready to come down and alternate back and forth with my B string. I took my finger off the high E and did open E. So I'm gonna play the riff here with position three. I'll use the high E ninth and the high E open so you can hear the slight difference. So 
that's your first twang embellishment note on position three. The other real big one I used a lot was I hit position three and just used my little finger for the high E tenth right above it. And you could try and do both of those embellishment notes, the open E and the high E tenth together. Something like that. Okay, those are two together. So here we go. Embellishment notes here are one embellishment note here. Down position three. Open and on the tenth. Now when we get to here, we're just doing the octave. So if this was position one with the two embellishment notes, this would be. You don't have to do that, of course. I'm just giving you more notes to play with. So I use my little finger. Again, I've, I've got the index, and then I've got my ring finger on the third string 14th, using my little finger to go off the 15th and the 14th, corresponding an octave up to what I did down here. And of course, up here, we're going an octave up. Remember, that was just two above on the seventh versus the fifth. So I'm up here on the 17th and the 19th. So when I come off of that, I can go straight into my embellishment note. Let's just use one of the two here for the octave of one. I'm going to use that uh, 14th. So. Okay, so those are embellishment notes. And again, so what we, let's just tie it all together here real quickly. We've got our positions. We know that they're completely interchangeable. We know that with the octaves, We've got entire neck coverage, and now we've added one or two embellishment notes. So mathematically, our twang potential goes through the roof just exponentially. So that's basically the whole point of this three-point system, that you can interchange these parts with octaves, work the entire neck, and then add some extra embellishment notes. And of course, we can add more embellishment notes down the line as these lessons go on, but this is a great place to stop, I think, and let you spend some time with it. The last thing I'll say about uh, how to think about integrating this into your lead playing, which is one of the original points we tried to get across mm -hmm. here, is, okay, I know that the parts are interchangeable. You've said that a lot. I get it. Thank you. Um, how do I decide which part to go into? Well, here's, I'll stay in A for the. Okay, if I want to do a, a riff like that, I'm doing a pretty typical for me. So if I'm down here playing in A and I want to do some twang stuff down here, I'll do a real quick. What I did is I did a twang, traditional twang, twang run into position one. That's what you heard. And that was just the five, four, three string. I was pick each of those strings once open and rolling notes on them. So in this case, I start with five. Then I do four open, roll this. Three, just one, that's the A note course which has now started us into position one so that I can go right into the open B and take it up. So that's all that is. And now we're in position one. Then what I did is I hopped up to what we learned as position three, the seventh position. I used one of our twang embellishment notes. I started on the high E9, took the bender up, went up took my finger off, did one embellishment note with the opening, and it back down. So, and then what I did is I went to the octave, what we learned is position one, the octave, and instead of just hitting the top two on the 12th, I used my little finger and just did the harmonics because they really jump out and sound great with a bender. Right? So that's all that was. So again, my point being is if I'm just playing around I'm just naturally playing some twang guitar and I want to start getting the bender involved. My first thought was, okay, ergonomically, where am I closest to right now so I don't have to go crazy? Well, I'm already right here in position one. It's just a matter of getting into it in a, in a reasonable fashion. Well, we just did that. Okay, so now what I want to do, well, I'm going to jump up here on the seventh. Well, where's my little finger? I mean, it's almost touching the twelfth anyway, so let's just grab those. That's kind of how my mind thinks, right? So if I was to do other stuff. Okay, so that's non-bender twang guitar right there. Pretty basic stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, I'd like to get the bender involved. 
Where did my hand get frozen right there? Well, my hand's frozen, what am I next to? Well, my little finger's almost already on the 12, so there's the octave of what we learned is position one. My index finger is already making the third string of our seventh shape. I've got options of plenty right there, right? <laughs> So I just went up my little finger, right into the position below it. Stayed in that position through in the two embellishment notes. I'm getting a lot of mileage out of it. You get the point. All right, that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to get out of here with one last thing, and that's how to think about it to easily transpose it. Let's just take it to any key we want, all right? Let's just grab a C. C bar chord, all right? Well, we already know from uh, the way we learned it initially that the top three strings of the bar chord would what we called position two when we initially learned this. So we've already got position two right here found by making that C bar chord if we wanna play in C. We know we've got that one embellishment note, just two up. Okay. We always know mathematically if that was the A seventh position, we know that same amount of position up the neck is gonna be the seventh position for C. There's my seventh shape for C. I took it with the embellishment note right back into position one of the bar chord. Now, do I wanna go down the neck? Okay, what's the next position of the three that we have in this system? I'm gonna go down here till I get to here, which is going to be... That's what we would have thought of as position one, right? And look how that is. Two and then on the third string, two frets above it. Well, if you think about it, that'd be your open string in A and then, then on the second, right? So all we did is take that up to here. And of course, an easy way we've always thought about it here in the Bender Bunker for all these years is that's gonna be our twang bender box. And that's one of the most powerful shapes you can have for B bender twang guitar. And a good way to think about that is if you wanna, if you're starting out first year player thinking about it, make the other C bar chord. That's the one they call the A bar chord shape because it kind of makes an A right there, but you're in C. So we know that that position, or that bar chord, well that allows your index finger to show you where the top two should be for C there, and then you go two up on the third string. So there you go. So now you've got that found. Of course, you know with that, you've got the octave of that right up there. I just jumped the octave, that's all I did. So there I am in C. You can always work out of the bar chord shape. We know that we learned that as position two. Our seventh is always located mathematically in the same amount of frets up. Next thing we're going to hit in the system is what we learned down here, the high octave of what we used to call position one. This is for C. That's our other high octave, our high octave C chord, right? Those are some embellishment notes. down to the lower octave of what we would think of as position one the way we learned it. That's how I quickly transpose it. If you just out of the gate, maybe think, okay, I want to start using this system in any key. Maybe just start by thinking, okay, I'm going to do G this time. Think of a traditional G bar chord. Then you already know where to go with the top two strings, top three strings, excuse me. You've got the one embellishment note waiting for you. So your bar chord leads you to where you want to be. You know that you're always just a few up from the seventh shape. And then right here, you've got the, because that would be the other G bar chord. So there's one, and there's three. And then we get up here, next thing we'd get up to would be the octave of one, of our first position. So that's, that's basically how to easily think of, maybe start by thinking of bar chords. I'm gonna find my position here, with that bar chord of the key I wanna play in. My seventh is always just right above it. And then that other version of whatever key I'm in bar chord shows me my index finger where I have to be on the top two and the third strings two frets above it. And then once you have those easily found in their second nature for you, make the embellishment notes second nature. <laughs> embellishment notes. All right, that is it. There's a whole lot of information there. I hope you got something out of the three point system. 
And again, it's about not limiting yourself to one direction, knowing the parts are interchangeable, utilizing the octave for full neck coverage, adding the embellishment notes for even more twang, and then just repetition so it becomes second nature. And then you're gonna find as you're doing your regular twang playing, because it does cover the entire neck, regardless of what key you're in, you're always gonna be near one of those positions to get your bender involved. And once you get your bender involved, once you've learned the three points, you'll always be next to the other two points and you can keep going. It doesn't have to just be one bender and done. I'm back to my non-bender solo again if you don't want it to be. That's all I've got for you. If you have any questions or comments on this, Go ahead and put them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get to them. If you're excited about the series, if you are a first year bender and you're looking forward to more installments, maybe give me an idea of what you might like me to cover throughout the year here in the comment section below. I will tell you, I'm not open right now to doing cover tunes. So if you're asking, hey, will you show me how to play this exact song? That's not what I'm asking for. We do one or two of those a year when the mood hits, but we're really more about trying to explore our bender and our guitar together and think of ways to start using it to get our own music done and, and have a little fun once in a while with the cover tune. So I'm not looking for cover tune suggestions. I'm looking for what you might want to learn as a first year bender. But uh, I've got some other ideas, so definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled on this channel because we're going to be coming up with some new installments soon. And if you are new and this is the sixth year, first lesson of the sixth year, we have done this from the first lesson. We're going to continue to do it. Our motto is what drives the channel. It is never too late to go on a bender, first year or otherwise. I certainly hope you do. And I'll see you again real soon. And as the opening track of the new Bender Bunker album states, keep it bent. Mm -hmm.